Leading the charge, All-Americans Karen Litchie and Kim Arnold. This season, Georgia has been on a mission, rolling to an undefeated season. The Gym Dogs are trying to overcome last year's disappointing NCAA championship performance. Three early mistakes on the beam took them out of contention. And that left the door open for the UCLA Bruins. And now the defending national champions are out to prove that last year was no fluke and that UCLA is a power to be reckoned with. Also in the championship hunt, the Florida Gators with sophomore Chrissy Van Fleet and Alabama led by junior Gwen Spidel. Arizona State has defending beam champion Elizabeth Reed, while Utah senior Tracy Summer will try to guide the young youths. All the skill, artistry, and excitement of women's gymnastics is coming up next. We are at Poly Pavilion on the UCLA campus for the 1998 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. An ERA Championship Series event. Hello everyone, I'm Andrea Joyce. Thanks for joining us. Well, for the past few years, the winds of change have been blowing through the collegiate gymnastics world. Just last year, for the first time in the history of this NCAA championship, a team other than Utah, Alabama, or Georgia won the team title. That was UCLA, and now the Bruins are back with a home gym advantage to try and defend that title. And joining UCLA in this Super Six competition, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Utah, and Arizona State. Joining me now, a woman who won an Olympic gold medal right in this very gym in 1984, Julianne McNamara. Julianne, about this competition, UCLA looked strong in the preliminary round, but the old guard seems to be rising again. What about Georgia? Well, I definitely have to pick Georgia as the favorite. They're always known for their pizzazz, and they take a lot of risks. In the past, that causes them some problems. They open the doors to making mistakes. But this year, they've been very consistent. They're very comfortable with being the favorite. Plus, they have their little gold nugget in Kim Arnold, the two-time NCAA individual all-around champion. So where does their biggest threat come from then? Well, UCLA, I think the home court advantage will help them. They also, despite having a season filled with injuries and inconsistency, they're still a very talented team. They can definitely rise to the occasion with the help of Stella Ume, who's one of the most talented athletes I've ever seen. And the Bruins will have their work cut out for them as they draw beam in the first rotation. Utah's on vault, Georgia's on bars, and Alabama starts on the floor. Florida and Arizona State have a bye. There's Valerie Condos now in her eighth season as head coach of UCLA. Once again, the defending national champions with the advantage of competing on their home floor. Teresa Wolf to start things off for Utah. And she'll round off onto the horse like a Sukohar with a half twist. A pretty good ball, but not a great landing. Wolf, one of three freshmen competing for this young Utah team. Over on the bars now, 21-year-old Sam Muleman getting set to go for Georgia. Suzanne Yachlin, head coach of the top-ranked Gym Dogs. They come into this competition top-ranked in all four disciplines and probably happy not to be starting on beam, Julian. That's right, and this is always a really exciting event for Georgia. There's a giant full. She's going to go right into her release move. Right here, a Jaeger flip, very nicely done. She has a big dismount. She'll do a double back off with a full twist on the first flip. An excellent landing. She actually does a full twist right into what's called a Jaeger flip. It's a front flip and re-grabs the bar. You can see she did a full twist on the first flip, very difficult. And for Muleman, it's a 9.90 on the uneven bars. Meantime, Teresa Wolf scores a 9.625 for Utah. 
Over on the beam now for UCLA, Heidi Moneymaker. Moneymaker, 20 years old. She was solid on the beam in the first day of competition in the preliminary round. Andrea, she is just really a great all-around gymnast. She's very strong, but she also has beautiful lines. She's very graceful. This is her key move right here. She'll do a back handspring into two layout back flips. Oh, no. Oh, wow. That's a five-tenth of a point deduction. And that really puts a lot of pressure on the other competitors. Julianne, we have seen this in the past. Why is it so difficult for a team to start on the beam? Well, I think it's because the margin of error is so minute. I mean, you're only up there on four inches, and, and you're nervous in the beginning of a competition. You'd rather start out on an event like floor where you can't fall off. And how difficult is it for her now? I mean, what's going through her mind as she gets back up there? Well, she is a veteran competitor, and, and you know, the thing is, you just have to regroup fast because you got to get up there and you have to finish strong. There was a jump combination right into a full turn. Those are required elements. She's setting up here for her dismount. And really, other than the fall, she's had a very smooth performance, but that was a big mistake. Good double back dismount, very difficult. Heidi Moneymaker clearly disappointed with that routine. Six competitors for each team on each event. They do toss out the low score. Always watch the hips because you can see her back leg did not come down straight and just threw her out of alignment. And it's a 9.175 for Moneymaker, a score that UCLA will want to drop. And as Julianne mentioned, that puts the pressure on the rest of the team. Over on the floor now, Alabama's Gwen Spidal. 20-year-old junior majoring in social work. And she just did a nice jump combination right into a double turn. Gwen was a freshman on the Alabama team that won the national title in front of a home crowd back in 1996. And you can see that she really has a good time performing on exercise because that's what it is it is a performance front with a full twist right into a layout step out <laughs> Gwen Spidal a very consistent performer for Sarah Patterson's Alabama squad CBS Sports presents the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. Sponsored by ERA Real Estate. Proud sponsor of the championship series. Head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. And by Nicorette Gum. You can do it. Nicorette can help. Is there a real estate professional who can give me answers to tough financial questions? Your local ERA real estate professional has the answers you're looking for. Answers to even the toughest financial questions. You'll find them in this fact-filled ERA answers book with answers about adjustable versus fixed mortgages, down payments, closing costs, points, and dozens of other financial questions many people find baffling. So if you're ready to buy or sell, call now for your free copy. ERA real estate, we're selling houses. So what are we gonna do today, Matt? Shave it off, <laughs> all of it, just <laughs> okay. Oh, it's just this dandruff. It goes away, comes back, goes away, comes back. Well, we can take care of that. Head and shoulders? With regular shampoo, flakes can keep coming back. But head and shoulders helps prevent flakes before they start. You may never see flakes again. And your hair looks great. Glad I didn't do something stupid like shave my head. Head and shoulders changes dandruff problems into beautiful hair. The worst? was I'd be at a party, and someone would light up a cigarette, and that cigarette would look like filet mignon to me. My mouth would practically water. Without Nicorette gum, I could never have quit. I could chew a piece when I needed it, and I would regain control, and it would soothe my cravings fast. After a piece of Nicorette, a cigarette would only look like top round to me, and that I could resist. Nicorette gum helps you fight your cravings, your habit, your way. You can do it. Nicorette can help. It's the way we welcome the sun, with 35 sunblock. 
the way the best water now mostly comes in bottles. It's the way we make time for exercise and like to enjoy reading. Today, more and more people are finding reasons to live healthier. That's why Subway offers seven subs, each under six grams of fat. Because when you're through surfing, you might want to put on a bathing suit. Subway, it's the way a sandwich should be. Back at Pauley Pavilion, Gwen Spidal with a 9.85 for Alabama on the floor. Georgia coach Suzanne Yachlin chasing her fourth national title. We asked her about the formula for winning here. We really feel that this championship will be determined only by two things, falls and steps. That the separation between the two teams will be made by falls and steps, steps on landings. Every bar dismount, every beam dismount, and every vault. And, you know, that's, that's the difference, but that's the, how the separation's going to be made. Is that ever true? In a sport like this, every tenth counts. Here's Jenny Bethard now, the NCAA defending champion on bars. Set to compete now for Georgia. And watch here, she'll uprise right to handstand and then do a giant swing with reverse grip. Very unique. Right into her release move here to Kachev. She had good height on that. Of course, you must perform some elements on the low bar. But these days, it's more like the men's high bar. Here's a full in back out dismount. A great landing. Jenny Bethard showing why she is ranked number three in the nation on the uneven bars. Over to the beam now, that's Kiralee Hayashi, 20-year-old junior, a neuroscience major, also likes to fish and surf, grew up in Hawaii. And most of the gymnasts, you will see their key moves right in the beginning of the routine. Here's her back handspring, back handspring, laid out back. Oh. Well, that is the second fall off the beam for UCLA. So they will have to count one of these low scores. And that is, that is major. That's five tenths of a point. And it, it's hard to make mistakes like this because then you're counting on the other teams making mistakes. UCLA just the 10th seed coming into this competition, but they had the highest, second highest team score after the preliminary round. So we were expecting to see a strong showing here in the finals. Kiralee has, has also gone on with routine and, and looks very solid. After the big mistake, she's kind of settled in. She's a beautiful gymnast. Double twist dismount. A very rocky start for the defending champions. Watch her back leg and her hips. You can see even after the second back handspring, she's already going crooked. And just a 9.2 for Hayashi. Boy, this brings back memories from last year. Val Condos was there watching as Georgia faltered on the beam in the first rotation, virtually took themselves out of the competition. Meanwhile, a 9.925 for Bethard, and Georgia continues to roll in the first rotation. Back over to the vault now. Tracy Summer getting set to go for Utah, the only senior on this young team. She'll ball the handspring front in a pike position. Good pop off the horse, but a big hop on the landing. Utah has gotten off to a slow start on the vault. Here's Karen Litchie, one of the best all-around gymnasts in the country. She won the bars event at the Southeast Regionals with a perfect 10. And watch this, she'll do giant full do another half twist into a Jaeger flip in a pike position. She's a very strong gymnast. Look at the power in a giant. Double layout, beautiful. That was a spectacular dismount. 
Watch the height she gets. She drops onto the bar, which it makes it easy for her to re-grasp the bar. And this is as good as it gets. That is just beautiful body extension. Litchie with an impressive performance, a 9.95 to wrap up the first rotation for Georgia. And for Tracy Summer, it's a 9.70 for that vault you saw a few moments ago. Here's Stella Ume, the last one up on the beam for the Bruins. Her mother watching very closely. Now remember, UCLA already has to count a fall, so they really need a high score from Ume here. Well, she came through with that mount, and now look at this tumbling combination. Back handspring, pike back, immediate back handspring, back layout. Very, extremely difficult. In fact, her whole routine is just packed with difficulty. Ume is competing with an injury. She injured herself at the regionals on her bars routine on the dismount. Her legs hit the bars and she landed on her head. Cartwheel pike back. Oh, unbelievable. What a nightmare this competition has been for UCLA so far. Over to the floor now, there's Shay Murphy for Alabama. She's a senior from Canton, Michigan. We talked about the Crimson Tide winning the title in 1996. Well, following that championship, Shea got a lizard tattoo on her back. Obviously, though, it's in a spot, Julianne, where we can't see it while she's competing. That's right, or those judges might deduct. <laughs> Double twist. And Andrew, we've seen a lot of performances this competition to Michael Jackson. Old is new again. Shay Murphy. She says that this season has been a lot of fun at Alabama. Says it's almost like being a freshman again. This was actually her middle tumbling run. She does two flips. Good height on the double back. And it's a 9.875 for the senior from Alabama. UCLA fell apart on the beam. Stella Ume with an 8.975. Not what you would expect from this season veteran, Julianne. But it was on a very difficult skill. You can see again, just her hips slightly twisted. And that's what will pull you off the beam. You can see her mother, Patsy, watching intently. Very disappointed. So after one rotation, the defending champions find themselves in a deep hole. Georgia is in the lead. Let's welcome in Wendy Hilliard now. She's standing by with Suzanne Yachlin. Well, Coach, you've been in this situation before, and you had a great performance on the bars. You really look like you're coming in, like your title says, as a first-ranked team going for the title. Well, thank you. We were a little tight there, actually, and didn't stick as many dis dismounts as we would have liked, but the first event is always a little tighter for every team. You know, you got to get those jitters out, so we're glad that's behind us, and, and we're ready to go on with the rest of the competition. Well, the next event's going to be the balance beam, right. and that proved last year to really cost you the national championship, so is there any strategy you're giving your athletes to be calm and steady this year? Well, it's a new team, a new year, a new attitude, and balance beam actually is our best event, so... Uh, I think what happened last year just doesn't make any difference right now today. Well, good luck with the rest of the competition. Thank Thanks, Wendy. We'll be back in a moment. Hey, California, Dr. Scholes wants to know, how far do you run? 35 miles a week. 10 miles a day. 15, 20 miles a week. What does that do to your shoes? The shoe breaks down. The cushioning is gone. Did you know that your insoles are the first thing to go? I've never even thought about the insoles. Those are your old insoles? They're pretty worn. Well, these are the Dr. Scholes Sport insoles. They provide extra cushioning and shock absorption for your feet. Pretty cushiony. Feels like it has some good support in the arch. Why don't you take out your old insoles and put these new ones in there? You just went for a quick run there. How did it feel? It's considerably better. A lot of spray, a lot of bounce. They feel good. You think you'll be able to run more miles a day now? Definitely. I still remember getting my first candy from my grandfather. It was Werther's Original, and I was four. I remember opening that golden wrapper and then that first taste, sweet and creamy and just plain good. I felt I was really somebody special when Grandpa gave me his wonderful butter candy. Now I'm the grandfather, and what else would I give my grandson but Werther's Original? He's somebody special, too. When some people have allergies, they sneeze a lot. Others get an itchy, runny nose or nasal congestion. Me, I had it all. So I said to my doctor, enough already. He prescribed Flonase nasal spray. 
Multi-symptom Flonase. Once a day relieves all nasal allergy symptoms all day and all night long. For any or all of those nasal symptoms. All it takes is Flonase. For best results, Flonase must be used daily. Maximum relief may take several days. Side effects are generally mild and may include headache, nose, bleed, or sore throat. Call to learn more. And now kids as young as four can use Flonase. For nasal allergy relief, ask your doctor about multi-symptom Flonase. When you get it all, all it takes is Flonase. If you can do this, you can make wood beautiful with Minwax. And if you can do this, you can give wood lasting protection. Turning a house into a beautiful home is as easy as turning to Minwax. With a career like hers and a face like hers, what prompts her to say? It completely screwed my head on backwards. 60 Minutes tonight. Back at the NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships, here's the lineup for the second rotation. Georgia, with a strong start, has a bye. Florida will be on the vault. Now, in the past, the Gators have been overshadowed in the powerful SEC. But Coach Judy Markell told us she believes her team is emerging. We've closed that gap, and, um, you know, now I think that it's, it's a more even fight. You know, it used to be, if we wanted to entertain hopes of beating Georgia, well, if Georgia falls apart and we have the best meet ever, then we have a prayer. You know, we don't look at it that way anymore. If we go out there and, and do 24 routines, we know we can compete in the same ballpark. So, um, you know, I don't feel like we're in their shadow anymore, um, and I don't think that anybody's unbeatable. She herself can take a lot of credit for that. She's been very instrumental in the rise of Florida gymnastics. And here's All-American sophomore Jamie Graziano. Pike front vault. Yeah! Excellent vault. Jamie has battled several injuries this season. Neck, sprained right foot, showing no ill effects, though, here. You always want to see a fast approach and good pop off the horse. She had good height. And the vault scores a 9.80 for Jamie Graziano. Over to the beam now in Arizona State's Elizabeth Reed. She does the same mount we saw Stella Ume perform. Layout on. Very difficult. Pretty big bobble there. But she stayed on. Reed, the NCAA co-champion on beam last year. That was very difficult. She did two layouts out of a two-footed landing on her back handspring. Again, you can just see those little tiny bobbles. We might have seen Elizabeth Reed in the 1996 Olympics, but she came down with 103 fever at the Olympic trials, left her weak, and she did not qualify for the team. She, again, is one of these gymnasts that kind of has it all. She's very flexible. She's very graceful. But she's a strong gymnast. And she was instrumental in Arizona State's runner-up finish at these championships last year. It was her performance that put them in contention for the title. Two back handsprings, double twist dismount. Couple of bobbles, but Elizabeth Reed looking calm and confident for a 19-year-old. And speaking of youth, here's 18-year-old freshman Shannon Bowles for Utah. Greg Marsden is going to rely on that youth to bring the youths back up to where they once were. They missed the Super Six last year. And that was after winning four titles in the 90s. That was a nice uprise, full twist, right into a giant full twist into her release move to Kachev. <laughs> Setting up now for her dismount. Another giant full, right into a flyaway full twist. Shannon was one of the most highly recruited gymnasts in the nation last year. This past season, she led the youth with 14 individual victories. 
Back at the beam, Elizabeth Reed scores a 9.60. And for Shannon Bowles, it's a 9.9 for her bars routine. Here's Chrissy Van Fleet getting set to vault for Florida. The Gators are ranked third in the country on the vault. And this is a very difficult vault. She'll do a pipe front and add a half twist. That was gorgeous. Van Fleet, 19 years old, from Orlando, Florida. Her dad plays in the band at SeaWorld. She's a four-time All-American. Look at the angle she repulses off the horse. That's how she gets such great height. And it's a 9.9 .9 for Van Fleet, and Florida is off to a great start on vault. Over on the floor, UCLA's Heidi Moneymaker. She'll try to shake off that fall earlier on the beam. And watch this, a full twisting double back. She managed to barely stay in bounds. It's a very hard tumbling run. 